Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the domain and range of exponential graph. So um, what I have up here is an example of the parent graph, all right? And that is with no transformations. So when looking at that, um, we can look at this example and say, all right, the domain and range, and remember in my graphing video, we saw this graph keeps on getting smaller and smaller, and it looks like it's approaching 0, but it never gets below 0. So uh, the range, remember, is basically how low the graph goes to how high it goes. So since it's getting closer and closer to 0, but never goes to there, we're going to say that the range of this graph is from oops, 0 to infinity. And we're going to use parentheses because 0 is not included, because it actually doesn't get to 0. The domain is going to be the set of all x values that are part of your graph. Basically, how far left does the graph go? How far right does it go? Uh, another way to think about that, is there any restriction on a value of x that you can't plug in? Can you take b and raise it to any number? Yes, you can. You can take b and raise it to any number. Basically, that means any this graph is going to continue going to the left, and this graph is going to continue going to the right. It doesn't really matter what value of x is. It, it can be basically domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Now, what I wrote below this is what we have the transformation function of an exponential graph. Again, b represents any constant. a, h, and k actually represent any constant. Now, remember, a is going to be basically, that's going to be kind of like stre um, stretching and compressing your graph, uh, as well as kind of moving uh, the graph kind of upwards and um, upwards and down, as well as like reflecting. So what's important is if a is going to be negative, what that does is that's going to now change my range. right? So you can look at this. If you can say a is negative, if a is less than 0, then my new range, this graph basically gets reflected to negative infinity to 0. So that's really, really important. All right? If a is less than 0, then it's basically going to be um, if a is less than 0, then it is going to be from negative infinity to 0. If as long as a is greater than 0, that's just changing whatever the y-axis or where the y-intercept is going to be. So it went still, it's still going to go down to 0 and so forth. So that's not really changing anything. The other transformation that is important is what, you know, if I shift this graph to the right, or if I shift this graph to the left, the graph is still going to go to the left and it's still going to go to the right. So the domain of my transformation graph is always going to be negative infinity to infinity. It doesn't matter. Even if I reflect the graph, it's still going to be negative infinity to infinity. It's always going to go to the left and always going to go to the right. Okay. So if the range is negative infinity to 0, all right, and then as well as also, let's just pretend a is greater than 0. So that's when a is less than 0. Let's pretend a is greater than 0. Now, this could be the case as well, too. When a is greater than 0, the range is um, 0 to infinity. But now, what, happened, what would happen if I, so right now we have a horizontal asymptote at 0. If I shift this graph up 1, my k, basically what that means is now it's going to go, the whole graph goes up 1, including the asymptote. That means the graph is never now going to approach 1. So if a is greater than 0, my range is 0 to infinity. Or if I have a k, it's going to be k to infinity. And that's going to be the exact same um, case as far as your range here, is it's always going to be negative infinity to k. Now h, again, as I mentioned, h doesn't affect the domain or the range. You can shift this graph left or right, upper, you know, left or right, doesn't matter, whatever h is. Your domain and range don't remain the same. However, if you have a is less than 0, that affects the range. And if you have a k, that's going to affect the range as well. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's just kind of a basic overview of how to determine the domain and range of your exponential graph. Thanks.